crises are always forming historically. We have seen this taking place, and it is always amusing to see the suggestions by those in the government structure, the politicians, and those technocratic elite who rule the world. So today we will discuss the worst idea to fix Greece in history. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Let's get into some of these articles here. I don't want to just get into this topic, but I want to connect the dots as I always do. Let's begin with this from a few days ago. We're looking at the Euro USD approaching around 108. What has been happening here for those who have been living under a rock? And that is the Euro isn't, isn't looking so pretty when compared to the US dollar, or is it the other way around? Who knows what's going on? going on for real because we know that the US has much more debt than the eurozone area does but that's not what this is about this is all about looking at the problems right now today because investors are only concerned about that particular trading day that's what you need to understand if the Federal Reserve will continue to have interest rates at low levels today, then that's fine. The money will continue to pour into the US dollar. But it's on that very day, it doesn't matter the future prospects, on that very day, if the Federal Reserve was going to raise interest rates to, let's just say, 5%, well, that day would be a bad trading day, and this is the way that they react. This is what's happening with the Eurozone right now, where it should have been a failed state from the very beginning because of one interest rate, one currency, but here we are in a consistent battle up and down. I'm going to move on to this, and this is something I've been noting not just with the currencies, but with other things as well. I've brought them up here, of course, and these are the different currencies. Now, what does all this mean? You get all these arrows and lines and everything, and here we have one currency versus another, and it is on a down trend. All of these other currencies, whether it's uh, the J Japan or whether it is the Canadian currency, doesn't matter. What we're looking at is a devaluation against the U.S dollar and this right here goes to show you that it doesn't matter exactly what is going on in the US as long as the other countries are doing worse let's go into this article here the ECB committed to full QE program sees stronger recovery well I can assure you about the QE program but the second part the stronger recovery is absolutely not going to happen ever the European Central Bank has no plans to curb or curtail its money printing program, although it expects Eurozone economic recovery to broaden and strengthen. This right here is completely fraudulent. We know the way that they react is never a, a realistic thing because what they say is that everything is going to be better next year. This year we're going to have some trouble, but don't worry about it. The future investments, they're all going to be good. But I keep hearing the same thing over and over again. doesn't matter which crisis we are facing. This type of news is present in every single one. So they have 60 billion euro purchases happening each and every Every month and they want to increase that in fact some say that they will in fact bring it down but I see it increasing uh, whether it's gonna go in any direction we don't know but they're always willing to print more money I assure you but why are they printing money if everything is doing so well so let's bring on to this article here this is uh, some information from the Levy Institute what they're saying is that they're gonna start I can't even believe I'm reading this, but IOUs are going to be the next bailout for Greece. The IOUs would have an interest rate of zero. They would be perpetual bonds with no date of maturity that would require the Greek government to repay the principal. They would be transferable. And holders of the bonds would use them to pay taxes with an accepted value of parity with the euro. This is what the economists are now suggesting because they need to use any possible strategy to keep this propped up. The IOUs wouldn't run afoul of European Union treaties unless the government insists that they would only be used for means of financing. That's right. We promise that we're not going to do anything with this money other than what we really need to. This is going to be something that we just give out IOUs 
and then that's it. They'll pay back later on and the crisis will be averted. Now, this is probably the most ridiculous suggestion I have ever heard in my entire life. This is really in many ways no different than a bond. I'll get into that in a moment. But an IOU giving to the people that are consistently putting themselves into more and more debt. And I'm not just finger pointing Greece because all of the countries, every single one in fact, for the most part, are running into the same problems. They're all in debt. In some way, way, shape, or form, they're all in debt. Look at the personal, look at the national, city, state, provincial, municipal, every single area in the whole world is running into more debt. Yes, on average, you know, this may work out to be higher or lower, but just look at the trend. More and more debt accumulation. I'm going to move on to this here, a diagram from my book. And I like to always show the diagrams from my books, which correspond because I found that just from the feedback from the individuals that I've gotten, these really helped a lot. So that's why I always like to show you guys these. And this is another example. The U.S. sells its debt to the Fed, and the Fed is left with a pile of IOUs. And those are bonds, right? So what exactly is going on here? Well, it's just printing up money out of thin air, giving it to the country who needs it, and then you give back an IOU, and you promise, you pinky swear to pay back. But of course, we know that's never going to happen because the world needs to go into further and further debt. So what's happening globally? Do we have countries that are successful? Do we have countries that are still growing? Well, we have China, who is definitely slowing down. China's central bank said it would cut the amount of cash that banks must hold as reserves, the second industry-wide cut in two months, adding more liquidity to the world's second biggest economy to help spur bank lending and combat slowing growth. This article is out of Reuters, and it's something that I'm consistently looking at because the reserve requirements are essential. This is why they put reserve requirements in the first place is so that the banks do not squander the money and give it out to people who should not have it in the first place. And this is one thing that they begin to do when the economy starts slowing down. They lower the interest rates. They relax the rules. I've been talking about China relaxing the rules for months now. We can see it steadily happening. The People's Bank of China lowered the reserve requirements ratio for all banks by 100 basis points to 18.5%. This number here is obviously higher than what we would see in the U.S., for example. But it doesn't matter. It is the trend. Look at where it's headed. Things are going downward. So they don't have to hold as much um, really, look, think about that. Only 18% of their money is there. So what would happen if everybody went to go pull their money out? Well, obviously, we would have a big problem. This is the bank runs that we've been considering for the recent past. We've seen them happen historically in various countries. This is a chart that I want to show you. Actually, if you want to scroll down on your own here, there are a few charts. Investor allocation to stocks, which is what I want to focus on. And then we have bonds, and then below that is cash. We can see that stocks are at the highest level since the financial crisis. Anytime they get too high, you know that there is a bubble that is being formed. So this right here is one example of that. People are just dumping their money into stocks. The investors are dumping their money into stocks, mutual funds, and everything is basically pointing its way into the stock market, the pension funds, and people are not necessarily directly invested in stocks because we know the massive amounts of poverty and unemployment, but this, the, they have the pension funds and everything that are essentially blowing this up to levels that we've seen before, only before a crash. This is another thing that I wanted to mention. Monthly retail and food services sales year over year with recessions highlighted. You can see those two areas that I wanted to note specifically because we had the dot-com boom and then we had this coming up into the financial crisis. The exact same pattern formed those two times and then you see it occurring right now today where we had the peak right here at about 2011 or 12, and then it has be begun to decline ever since. This goes to show you how 
bad things are getting. We, we know specifically that anytime we have repeated patterns, guess what? It continues to cycle. Things like this continue to happen. This is just one example. Monthly retail and food services sales. I've been bringing to you all of the different indicators. Remember, there aren't just two indicators of the health of the global economy being the US dollar and the US stock market. Stay with me and I will show you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different indicators which show the true health. Then let's look at this one, last but not least. And this is the solution. This is what happens when you have a faltering economy. They try to combat, combat that with ridiculous ways. And look at this. EU looks at compulsory breathalyzer fittings for all cars. Now, right away, I just wanted to mention this. You can think about this as perhaps being a good thing. Now, people don't want to necessarily uh, be in uh, on the roads with these dangerous drivers. I totally understand that. I see where people are coming from on that. The European Commission is looking at making it compulsory for all cars to have common fittings for safety technology such as breathalyzer, but the car industry is resisting a standardized socket which says it would be too costly. I can totally agree with this in principle. You want the roads to be more safe. I totally understand that. But just as with any of these other government schemes, we know that they are always to generate revenue, never to protect the individual. In fact, most times they end up making the individual more poor as a result. This has been documented consistently and in uh, different areas not just of the u.s but in other places around the world we know that they are never there to really assist us they are only there to suck the wealth from us if you found this video informative please give me a thumbs up i'm trying to make some uh, new content on here trying to bring out as much of this information as I possibly can. I'm trying to get back to all the emails, all the comments and everything. So stay with me on this. And last but not least, don't forget to become an insider. It's where I give out all my best intel for free. And that is available at themoneygps.com. Just scroll down to the bottom, fill in your email address, and you get occasional emails from me with good, short, concise info.